Hello and welcome back to MathsWithDavid.com. I'm David Swanson and today I'm going to be walking you through a complex numbers question on the P3 Pure Mathematics 3 exam paper from Cambridge International A Level. So as always I'll start by reading the question through. The complex number 1 minus i is denoted by u. 1. Showing you're working, and without using a calculator, express i over u in the form x plus i y, where x and y are real. 2. On an argand diagram, sketch the loci representing complex numbers z, satisfying the equations mod of z minus u equals mod z, and mod of z minus i equals 2. 3. Find the argument of each of the complex numbers represented by the points of intersection of the two loci in part 2. So on part 1, we've got a fraction i over u, or we know from the top that u is 1 minus i, so i over 1 minus i, and we're asked to put it in the form x plus i y, which basically means we don't want to have a denominator, we, we don't want a fraction. So the way to do that, we've got 1 minus i on the bottom. We need to use our difference of two squares formula. Now the difference of two squares formula tells us that a minus i times by a plus i equals a squared minus i squared. So i squared, of course, is a number, so it will get rid of our i's from the bottom. So our 1 minus i, we need to multiply by 1 plus i. And of course, we need to also multiply the top of the fraction by 1 plus i. So if we multiply through on the top of the fraction, we get i times by 1, which is i, plus i times by i, which is i squared, so minus 1. On the bottom of our fraction, we get 1 minus i times by 1 plus i is 1 squared minus i squared, or 1 minus minus 1. So then if we write that out, we've got minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2i, so minus a half plus a half i. Now for the second part of the question, to start off with we need to think what each of these things are, the mod of z minus u the, and the mod of z. So the mod of z minus u literally means the distance between z and u. And the mod of z we can rewrite as the mod of z minus 0 and this is the distance between z and the origin, the point 0, 0. So if mod of z is equal to mod of z minus u, what that means is that the distance of the, the loci is always the same distance from the origin as it is from point u. So if this is the origin and this is point u, we want a path that's always the same distance from these two points. Well, geometrically speaking, that's the perpendicular bisector of the line joining these two points. So if we've got a line joining these two points, we have the perpendicular bisector of them. So we need to draw that line onto our graph. Now we come to look at the second part of the question. Here we're told that the mod of z minus i equals 2. So that literally means that the distance between z and i is always 2. So if the distance between a path and a point is always the same, then that path draws out a circle. In this case, it's a circle where it's always 2 away from the point i. Another way of saying that is we've got a circle centred on i, or centred on the Cartesian coordinates 0, 1, with a radius of 2. So on the same graph, we need to draw this circle centred on 0, 1, and with a radius of 2. Now the third part follows on from the second part and it asks us to find the two intersection points of this circle and the line. So if we just use our Cartesian descriptions of the circle and the line, using the equation of a, a circle, the Cartesian equation of a circle, the centre of our circle is 0, 1 and the radius is 2, so the equation is x minus 0 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 2 squared. And then for our line, if we think here, our line 
is perpendicular to a line of a, with a gradient of minus 1. So the line has a gradient of 1 and it passes through the halfway point between 0, 0 and 1, minus 1. So it passes through half minus a half. So we can use our equation of a straight line to write out y minus y1, which in this case is minus a half. So y plus a half equals m, which in this case is 1, times by x minus x1. So in this case, x minus a half. So we have y plus a half equals x minus a half, which we can subtract the half on both sides and say y equals x minus 1. Now if we substitute that y equals x minus 1 into the equation of our circle, we have x squared plus y minus 1 minus 1, or y minus 2 squared equals 4. We can expand that to give x squared plus x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 4. And then if we collect our terms together, we've got 2x squared minus 4x, the force cancels out, so equals 0, and we can factorise to write 2x times by x minus 2 equals 0. So clearly there's two possible values of x which solve this equation. One is x equals 0, and the other one is x equals 2. And we find the corresponding y values by putting back into our equation of our line. So if x equals 0, y equals 0 minus 1, so y equals 1. And if x equals 2, y equals 2 minus 1, so y equals 1. So now we need to find the arguments of the complex numbers, so let's do little sketches. The first one, if we've got x equal to 0 and y equal minus 1, the angle that makes going out from the origin, well, we're going directly down. So it's 90 plus 90 plus 90, so it's 270 degrees is the argument. And then your x equals 2, y equals 1, we're in the first quadrant, uh, we're going 2 across and 1 up, so if we imagine this angle theta, it, we can use trigonometry and say the tan of that angle is the opposite, which is 1, over the adjacent, which is 2. So tan theta is a half, so theta is the arc tan of a half in the first quadrant, so putting that into our calculator, that's 26.57 degrees. So as normal, let's go back through and look where the marks are got. There's a total of nine marks for this question. The first is a method mark in part one, and we get that method mark for multiplying the top and bottom of our fraction through by 1 plus i, showing that we understand that the difference of two squares formula will help us to get rid of the i on the denominator of the fraction. And then we get an accuracy mark for following through and getting the correct answer, minus a half plus a half i. Second question, four marks, two marks for our circle and two marks for our line. With our circle, we get one mark if the centre's in the correct place, in this case at 0, 1 on our Cartesian coordinates, and one mark if the radius is correct, so it's a radius of 2. And with our line, we got one mark for marking on the point u at coordinates 1, minus 1, and then a second mark for drawing this perpendicular bisector that passes through it. And then the third part, we've got three marks on this part, we get one mark for getting 270 degrees. That was seen as the easier of the two bits, so they just gave us one accuracy mark. We have to get exactly 270 degrees. It's fine if you write it in radians as well. And then the other two marks were for the other intersection point. For that one, we got one mark for identifying where the point is, so x equals 2 and y equals 1, or, or 2 plus i. And then the second mark for actually getting the angle correctly is 26.57 degrees. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, as always, we have other complex numbers questions for P3 papers on the website at www.mathswithdavid.com. So feel free to check that out. I'll put a link up here which lets you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can stay informed of other questions if they're useful to you. Um, Thanks for listening. See you next time.